Myanmar City volunteers distribute food to impoverished families. In our feature report, we take a look at Chinese yam and its benefits for our health. Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Siri Su. Thank you for joining us. Besides helping villagers with low income, City Myanmar Liaison Office Relief Plan also helps residents who are unemployed. City volunteers distribute rice and cooking oil, helping 150 impoverished families. <laughs> Near the railroads, this damaged house is Dalkate's and Tin's family's house. The entire family of six relies on the husband selling popsicles and collecting PET bottles, making less than 1.5 USD a month. My husband goes out at 5 in the morning and comes back at 9 at night. In order to let his family eat more, he even avoids eating lunch. Under the pandemic, Families like these are everywhere in Myanmar's villages. As Yangon Siji volunteers continue to carry out relief distributions, 115 impoverished families at Legu Township recently received aid. Everyone may adopt a rice bank, put a handful of rice in the jar before cooking, become a giver so that you may help others in need. Supplies given out by volunteers include 48 kilograms of rice and 2 liters of cooking oil. 12-year-old Meng Zhu came here alone to carry supplies as volunteers accompanied him home. Being filial, Meng Zhu takes care of his siblings when his parents are out working. Not only can he do housework, he is also great at managing the daily 2 USD budget his mother gave him. After hearing the hopes of Meng Tzu, the Tzu-Chings who were participating in the house visits were heartbroken. Through house visits, we understand people's lives and I learn a lot. To cherish items and do more good deeds, we must grab onto the chance and help more people in need. The pandemic has worsened people's lives, but with Tzu-Chi giving out a helping hand, the supplies and love provide a morale boost to villagers, aiding them through tough times. The year in blessing ceremony for recycling volunteers was held in Banchao grounds. Although everyone observed the pandemic prevention distance, they were full of love and care. The recycling volunteers gathered at Banchao Jinxi Hall to have the year in blessing ceremony and strictly followed the epidemic prevention regulations. Everyone wears a mask and sits apart with social distancing, yet everyone's heart is closely connected. I think it's good to do recycling. My body is getting healthier. As I continue to do it, I'm so grateful for the master for setting up recycling stations. In response to embracing vegetarianism, volunteers have invited a nutritionist to demystify vegetarian nutrition. Eat brown rice with tofu for at least one meal a day. For those who are vegan, you can also obtain calcium from tofu and dried tofu. Of course, it must be balanced. The more variety, the better. To thank the recycling volunteers for their dedication, the master gave each volunteer a gift which is multifunctional, satisfying the needs of the senior Buddha servers. The apple is so cute and attached with a velcro for the convenience of the elderly. It can also be folded up as a bag. It's so great and so practical. The recycling volunteers are older and many may have knee problems. It is a bit difficult to stand up after squatting down. The master is very considerate to give us knee pads. Recycling volunteers work with both hands for the cleanliness of the earth. Even though they are getting older as time passes, they still enjoy doing it. In Taiwan City Foundation recently signed an MOU with the Soaring Water Conservation Bureau. It is hoped that through this cooperation, they're able to gather the resources from both parties. Recently, a landslide occurred at the railway tracks between Raifang and Ho Tong due to heavy rains, causing the Taiwan Railway to stop operating. In recent years, due to global warming, extreme rains have become a norm, which can lead to landslides and other disasters. To minimize the damage to the people caused by these natural disasters, the Soil and Water Conservation Bureau has signed an MOU with Tsuji Foundation. Tsuji Foundation has carried out many disaster reliefs here. 
and currently they are venturing into the field of prevention of disasters and reduction of damages when disasters occur. If we can cooperate and work together, I believe it will be of great benefit. The Soil and Water Conservation Bureau will provide information, technologies and hardware on disaster prevention, while Cixi has a lot of experience in disaster relief and inventing various compassion technologies. Cixi has also nurtured over 700 disaster prevention members, cultivating the community to have the ability to prevent disasters themselves. This time we're able to work together with the Soil and Water Conservation Bureau. Our disaster prevention members and our disaster prevention ideals can also be spread further and practiced in daily lives. We can also know that which areas in Taiwan are prone to landslides and floods so that we can send our volunteers there to help prevent the disaster from happening. Government sectors and NGOs are working together to prevent disasters from happening, joining hands to safeguard people's safety. In Kaohsiung's Namasha district, there's a health care center which was set up just to safeguard the local villagers' health. A doctor heads over regularly to keep an eye on the locals' health. On the windy mountainous roads, unexpected incidents often occur and the road conditions are not always smooth. If we come across a large truck transporting an excavator, we can only reverse. There's no other way. You can't possibly ask the truck driver to reverse. They head up to the mountainous areas once every month because they want the people living in the indigenous village being able to receive medical treatment. Last year, there were no doctors available, so I closed my own clinic and came over here to be on duty and stay for one whole month. Sometimes when I'm unable to find doctors to come over, I'll head over here myself. Twenty years ago, he devoted himself into serving the people in rural areas. Oh Tan Zheng specializes in allergy and rheumatology, which is exactly what the people living in the rural areas need. The most common problem here is gout. Among the Bunongs, one in every four men has gout. In the mountainous regions, a doctor must be all-rounded and cross the vision because they cannot reject the patients who are seeking treatment. As for delivering babies, we're just compelled to do so. When the pregnant mother is being sent to the healthcare center, the baby's head is already out, so we can only do our best to help her deliver her baby. After Typhoon Marakot made landfall, the medical team did not back away, but chose to head into the villages to save lives. Dr. Li Chuaning, who majors in family medicine, headed to Taurian right away to help. However, the bridge at the Laonong River collapsed, and did you know how she headed into the village? She sat inside the bucket of the excavator, which transported her over the river. Regardless of her life, head nurse Li Xiaohua safeguards the health of the rural villagers. She was trapped in the landslide twice and suffered from fractures, but she never backed down. I was swept away by the water and doctors helped clean my wound. At 4 o'clock in the morning, another landslide occurred and it buried me underneath. The people from the tribal village helped me put on a beautiful white skirt. When I woke up, I did not remember what happened. The villagers told me that when you were escaping, at least wear a shirt, don't just wear an underwear and run around. With the healthcare center, the villagers can receive medical treatments easier. And it is also a great help to keep them safe and healthy. The healthcare center located in the mountainous region is not very eye-catching, but it is being more completed day by day. The medical personnel do not feel burdened as they safeguard the villagers' health. The 150th Jingsi Reading Room in Taiwan has officially opened in Handuan Junior High School. More than 90% of the students in remote regions are Bunong. Because of the sponsorship of entrepreneurs, students have the opportunity to read. The students welcome the distinguished guest with Bunong song and dance. It is hoped that through Jing's reading room, students can cultivate good reading habits. Maybe you don't feel it now, but at a certain time in the future, it will give you strength or help you. You never know. But we don't need to be very profitable. Even if we don't have material gain, it can help you develop the habit of reading, thinking, and calming down. When reading the books, Jingzi aphorism makes students feel inspired. If we spread love, we'll be in good mood and happy. If we calm down, we may finish reading your book. Besides, this place is quiet and we can read some class books. The students use Bunong folk songs to thank the kind people for their help. Jing's reading room can not only make up for the lack of resources in the local area, but also gives students a place to calm their minds.
as the weather turns cold, traditional Chinese medicine emphasizes on nutritional intake and taking care of our stomach and intestines. Let's take a look at Chinese yam and its benefits. As the weather turns cool, people are starting to wear thick jackets. Traditional Chinese medicine emphasizes on taking care of the yang energy during the first half of the year and taking off the yin energy during the second half of the year. With sufficient nutrient intake, our body will grow better. During autumn and winter, we need to take care of stomach and intestine. Chinese yam, which is abundant during this time of the year, is the best food for the job. Chinese yam is not only a food ingredient, but it's also a medical ingredient. Before helping a child during puberty, we often use Chinese yam in the process of taking care of the stomach and intestine. Traditional Chinese medicine practitioners are very fond of Chinese yam. Next, we follow Dr. Wang's footsteps and head to Hualien Xinchen Township to meet with a Chinese yam expert. Yang Chaoyong is the captain of the Hualien Chinese yam sales and production team. Using organic farming methods, he has cultivated 10 different species of Chinese yam in his farm. Chinese yam are considered twinning plants, which need support for their growth. They planted during the spring and they start to grow in the summer. During winter, they will start to wilt, and when the bobillus appear on top, it means that the Chinese yam beneath it is almost ripe. The house is in fact a PVC pipe cut in half. Originally, Chinese yam grow deep underneath the ground, and it's very difficult to dig for them. Besides digging deep, the farmers might also damage the Chinese yam. Therefore, farmers nowadays use this method. When they are collecting the Chinese yam, it not only saves time, but also prevents it from being damaged. When we pour out the dirt, we can see the Chinese yam. It has very long roots, which means it is a very hardy plant. Some Chinese yam are long, some are chewy, and some are as thick as a human's arm. Some are also purple in color. When we are buying Chinese yam, we need to choose the ones which are not damaged, have smooth surface and without fungus growing on top. For same sizes, the heavier the yam, the better it is. However, Chinese yam contains saponin and plant alkali, which might cause a person to have allergic reaction while cleaning it. Usually, we will clean with water. If not, we can also use soap or lemon. If we can clean using lemon plus water, it will be better. For Chinese yam, it is best to mix it with portraits during the season, because Chinese yam is white. It is good for our lungs and also takes care of our stomach and kidneys. So it is best for us to consume during the winter season. So how do we prepare this dish? First, we need to add red dates and goji berry. And when we are adding the red dates, we need to remove the seed in the middle to prevent getting heaty. According to the ancient medical scriptures, Chinese yam porridge is also known as immortal porridge, and it's very nutritious. It's a very good energy replenishing food for the winter season. Chinese yam in our medical research, it contains diocid and mucus. The mucus is most commonly seen when we are cooking the Chinese yam. Both the diocid and mucus have proven to have characteristics of taking care of the kidney and stomach, as stated in the ancient scripts. There's something that we need to be careful while eating Chinese yam, because it has a function of stopping diarrhea. So if you have constipation issues, do take note and do not consume too much Chinese yam. If not, your constipation issues will worsen. On the market, besides fresh Chinese yam, there is also dried Chinese yam, which is one of the ingredients for the Sichuan soup. But one must still be careful of counterfeits. This is tapioca, which is a very common plant found in our local villages. If you look closely, there's a spot in the middle which is the biggest characteristic of the Euphorbia family. It's very hard to spot the difference with the naked eye, but its texture and nutritional value has a big difference. One needs to pick carefully so as to replenish the correct nutrients and for the medical purpose to be able to take effect. In Hualien, Ziji Senior High School held a starvation experience activity. Students fasted for 12 hours, and the money saved from the two meals were donated to the people in the Philippines and Africa. In Ziji High School, a musical concert was held. The school had used songs to encourage the students for their courage to experience starvation. My hope for 2021 is that the pandemic can end soon and that there will be less people in the world suffering from starvation. Jesus, so 
The activity has been held for four consecutive years now. This time, they'll send their love to the Philippines and Africa. Although the children aren't able to contribute much, but if they can save one meal per day, they're able to save enough food for the refugees to last for a month, maybe even more. So we carry out this activity every year, and every year we can feel the sufferings the refugees are facing. Foreign students from Tsuji University use the traditional African dance to express their gratitude towards the students. Through cloud technology, love from various countries are linked together. A total of 3,000 students participated in the event this year. Graduates from Tsuji Kindergarten in Johor Bahru just had a first graduation ceremony in their lives. The ceremony was supposed to be held in Jing Si Hall, but was changed to online because of the pandemic. Dears to parents and honorable guests, teachers and graduates, good morning. This year is really special. It is the first time for us to have live broadcasts through Zoom and YouTube. As we were not familiar with the software, we have done rehearsal many times. We also have to overcome any possible matters arising from these computers. We have been wishing that this computer can support the videos of the children and the network can be smooth enough to spread the videos all over the world, including their moms and dads and those who are watching. With a little thought, the living room can be changed to a solemn graduation ceremony. Whether it is online or offline, children are the brightest protagonists on this day. Although it is a bit regret to host the graduation ceremony online, it is very special to have his own graduation ceremony at home because it feels like being a VIP. We have a decorator here for him alone, so as to give him a surprise. Delivering the graduation speech, moving the graduation cap tassel, performing the sutra of profound gratitude toward parents' adaptation to passing down the heart lamb. These wonderful images of the children were all carefully record beforehand. Uh, Zihao may be born with drooping eyelids, so he often does not have much confidence. But when I saw him telling his teacher that although he has a big and a small eye, he is still very powerful. I and his class teacher were really happy because he has finally overcome the barrier in his heart. After three years of carefree living in the kindergarten, the children are reluctant to say goodbye. I do not want to leave the kindergarten because I want to stay together with my classmates. I want to thank my parents because they have given birth to me and raised me. I want to tell my teachers that I love you. Although it is not possible to hold a graduation ceremony in Zinxi Hall, the online ceremony at home is also warm and touching. After three years of humanitarian education, the children will continue to pursue elementary study next year with memories of kindness and love. At the Department of Life Science in NTU, a group of volunteers arrive at the lab every Friday. They are here to create samples for whales and dolphins after unfortunate death. Upon midnight every Friday, a group of people appear at the Department of Life Science in NTU. Through the dark corridors, this room is their secret laboratory. <laughs> this is the Taiwan Cetacean Society sample making room. For 20 years, volunteers have been here to make samples at midnight, creating samples for whales and dolphins after their unfortunate deaths, and exposing the harsh truths to people. <laughs> Li Zongwen has been rescuing cetacean aquatic mammals for nearly 20 years. His occupation of making samples for cetaceans is also rare within the nation. The methods he developed allow a full preservation of the cartilage. Basically, cetaceans have a hundred or so bones, and as for bones, every species is different. As you can see, this bone is loose. Terrestrial mammals need to withstand gravity. Therefore, its bone density has to be high and tough. Although cetaceans are mammals, it still lives in the sea and uses its lungs to breathe, storing extra fat within its loose bones. 
This allows survival during long journeys. It actually grows up drinking milk. It is a viviparous animal. And when little, there's a tin lanugo on its mouth. Furthermore, it uses lungs to breathe. So it means they have this organ. Normally, a dolphin would go up to breathe every five to 10 minutes. And when it can't make it up, it will drown. Li Zhonghan graduated from NTU's Department of Chinese Literature as he was an insurance salesperson with superb pay. He told us that a flexible job allows him to rescue cetaceans anytime. The pay must also be good so he could fund the makings of samples. Every Friday, a group of volunteers that he trained joins him in making samples. I'm not cutting the gaskets which stimulates the cetacean intervertebrate disc because in the past we cannot preserve the intervertebral disc so when the volunteers assemble it, the proportion will be off. This blame field big whale is from Kinmen and it's 5 meters in length. After taking out the inner organs, we will put it in jars, letting the bacteria eat up the meat that we are unable to clean. Using bacteria, the meat is not completely clean from bones. Now the volunteers have to scrape the bones and disinfect them entirely. After drying, the bones have to be scraped again in order to keep the sample preserved. Like this sample here, oil is coming out. There is even a bit of bone wax. So at this time, we will scrape the bones again and use organic solvents to extract the fat out. The smell produced from the sample making process often makes neighbors uncomfortable. Therefore, Li Zhonghan and his volunteers have to wait until midnight working at the rooftop. Another group of volunteers scrape the remains of muscle tissues as cetaceans normally have thick fat and meat. Through the process, volunteers are covered in blood, but they never complain. <laughs> We need a lot of manual labor because there will be a lot of meat, blood, and the smell is horrible. I've never cooked bones since after cooking, it becomes loose. Details will be lost if doing so, and the preservation timings will be affected. One full sample requires half a year to create. And with more care for detail, samples created have high value in research. Making samples is time and effort consuming. The smells also have sent people away. But in order to let humans reflect on what they did, evidence has to be gathered. Besides liking these animals, we have to gain the responsibility to protect them. Especially since I have a special skill like making samples and healing wounds, to me, I have a special connection with the cetacean species. Every Friday at midnight, these volunteers are unpaid, yet no one complains about the grease and effort involved. People here worked harder each day in order to collect evidence, protesting for silent cetaceans in hope to better their lives. In Gold Coast, Australia, today volunteers deliver Christmas gifts to homeless individuals. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye.